if you're a SQL Server DBA, chances are you include a utility database on each SQL Server instance that you build. This database probably contains a lot of different objects that you use to manage your environment. Hey, I'm Luke, and today I'm going to show you how you can potentially create this database using Ansible. That allows you to add this step in your overall build of a SQL Server instance. Maybe you want to add this playbook into an Ansible role that you use to configure all of your instances or if you're building multiple instances at once you could also include this step as your as your build process so let's go ahead and switch over to the lab environment and I'll give you a quick overview of what we're using today I have three SQL servers set up already installed but as you can see there's no user databases already already in place we'll go ahead and refresh those just so that we make sure that there's nothing there and so we've got SQL 1, SQL 2 and SQL 3 all running on a VMware workstation and if we jump into Visual Studio so let's take a look at this the playbook that we're going to be using today it's called playbook underscore create database dot YML uh, if you've seen this if you've seen the previous video I did a few weeks ago I'll put a link to it somewhere but anyway, if you've seen that, some of this may look familiar. The first step is going to be to import a playbook which will download the SQL Server DSC resources from GitHub to my local Ubuntu or, or WSL uh, machine, which is what, what we're using. So it's going to download those resources first and we'll, we'll actually copy those over to uh, SQL 1, 2, and 3 because we're going to utilize those uh, those resources specifically the SQL database and SQL scripts uh, resources once that is completed we'll then go down and start defining this playbook the name is going to be just add database to target host the host is SQL servers we are going to gather facts um, we'll jump over into the inventory file in, in just a second and I'll show you the, the definition of this group in that inventory file and then we're going to set up some interactive uh, prompts using vars underscore prompt uh, so that when we run this playbook at runtime, we'll be asked which instance name we want to target. Press enter for the default, which is what we'll do today. And then the next variable that we'll prompt is the database owner. So we can set the database owner of the databases that we create to be someone else this example we're just going to set it to SA and then we move down into our tasks block so the first task is copy DSC modules to target and we're going to use Ansible's Windows win underscore copy module to copy those over so the source is item so basically I've got multiple DSC resources that I download and I can loop over those using with items but in this case we're just going to copy over SQL Server DSC because that's all we need uh, and what's going to happen is this item variable is going to be replaced with this value and then the destination on the target is going to be C program files Windows PowerShell modules next step is we're going to actually create copy our SQL scripts that we've defined and we'll take a look at those in a second. They are located here in this SQL scripts folder. Uh, we're going to copy those to each one of those targets and we're going to create a SQL scripts folder inside the C temp directory. Next, we're actually going to create those databases using WinDSC and then the resource name that we're going to utilize is SQL database. We're going to ensure that that database is present. The name of our database is going to be DBA Util. A server name is going to be on localhost because at this point this is running on the target server. The instance name is going to be what we provide at runtime uh, or we'll just hit enter and it's going to use the default instance. And then the owner name is going to take the value that we provide and place it here. Once the databases are created on all three servers, then we're going to actually use WinDSC again, but this time we're going to deploy our objects using those these uh, SQL scripts. You'll see here that we're going to use the SQL script resource, and then 
it kind of gets weird. There's a set file path, get file path, and test file path. So for each one of those, you need a T-SQL uh, script. The get file path, the or the get script is going to look and see if the database is what state the database is in. The next thing that's going to run is the test uh, script. So that's going to test if the database is already in a state that we want it to be, then nothing's going to happen. But if not, if these objects have not been deployed or if the database is empty, then set file the set file path or the that script will actually run and create our objects. So it's omnipotent, uh, idempotent based on the scripts that you define. And then the query timeout is 600. Again, the server name is going to be localhost because we are running these locally on the machine. The instance name is going to be the value that we provided when prompted. And then here we've got a variable. If you're familiar with SQL command, uh, then you'll you'll notice kind of this syntax is the same. Database name is going to be dbutil, dbautil, and encrypt. We're not going to encrypt our connection today. So let's look at these different scripts that we've defined uh, first. So we'll start with the git dash dba util. And what this is going to do is going to use, and then we're going to pass in that variable that we set in the playbook. So it's going to use dba util and then go. And then we're actually going to go check to see if there's three objects already in place. So if the current state, we're going to get the current state of uh, sys.schemas where name equals perms so we're looking for a perms schema and then the next step is we're actually going to look for a table named snapshots within that schema and then we're going next we're going to look at a database permissions table or look for a database permissions table so that's just going to get the the current state of the database next is going to be the test dash dba util so we can see we'll first check to make sure that that database exists if it doesn't exist, uh, we're go just going to print this back out to the console and just say did not find database DBA util and skipping. But if it is found, then we're going to check to see if there's any objects within the database that have been created already. Because if they have, then we probably don't want to use this set of scripts to modify it. We, you can make these more intelligent so that it will modify objects based on a other set of rules, but we're going to keep it simple today. So we're going to make sure that there's no objects, uh, no user objects in this database. If there are, then we're going to say found database DBA util. However, it contains user objects, so it's going to skip. Ansible won't make any changes. But if it, if everything is as it should be, if the database is in place and there's no user objects, then we're actually going to raise an error. So that's basically going to tell Ansible, this database is not in the state that we've requested it to be, and this set DBA util.sql script will run. So let's go take a look at that. And here you can see that we've, we're using our variable again that's passed in from that task. And then we're just going to use straight T SQL to create those objects. First, we're going to create the permissions or the perms schema, and then the snapshots table, and then database permissions. And we have a few uh, check constraints down here defined. So that's what we're getting ready to run. Let's go ahead and do that. Again, I'm using uh, Ubuntu installed on a Windows subsystem for Linux running inside of Windows Server 2022. And so this is the console here, and we're going to go ahead and run this playbook. So, uh, actually, before we run that, I need to show you the host file. This is our SQL Server's group. These are, are our machines, SQL 1, 2, and 3. These are comments. If you're not familiar with the inventory file, you can comment sections out with or lines out with the hashtag. And then here is our variables to set up our connection. We're going to use WinRM. Um, we're going to ignore the cert validation. The Ansible port we're going to use is 5986. We are going to use Kerberos for the authentication. Now we're going to jump back to our playbook and I'm going to go ahead and go into the console. 
we're going to run Ansible playbook and then we're going to run this playbook underscore create database.yaml. The username is my domain account, luke at sandbox.local, and then I'm just going to be prompted for my password. So the first thing is going to check to see if those DSC resources have already been downloaded, and they have, and then it's going to go ahead and here's where we're being prompted for those interactive values. So I'm just going to press enter for the default because all of these are the default instance. And here I'm going to accept the default as well because I want these to be owned by the SA account. Now you can see it's going through and gathering facts. Now it's copying the DSC modules to target. I think I've already copied these over, but if there if they wasn't in place, they would be copied and you would see instead of OK, you would see changed. So now we're copying over our SQL scripts and then we're going to create those databases if they don't exist. And we've already seen that, that they don't. And now we're deploying our objects. And that's all set. No errors. We can see that we had three changes. Let's go ahead and jump back into Management Studio and refresh to make sure that these databases are in place. So we have it on SQL 1, SQL 2, and should be on SQL 3. And let's go ahead and expand it and make sure our tables are here. And we do have our two tables. Of course, the schema is there too because it's perms.database underscore permissions. Let's check the properties and see who the owner is. And we can see that SA is the owner. I'm going to check one more. And SA is the owner here. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you're using Ansible and, and how you're using that or using it to manage Windows or you're using it mainly for Linux uh, or are you using PowerShell DSC. Um, and be sure to like and subscribe. I'll have a lot more content coming out just around this area, Ansible and anything with SQL Server. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.